How's it going, boys, girls, and squirrels? We are not done with Has Been Hotel just yet. One of the best parts of Has Been Hotel, arguably the best part of Has Been Hotel, is its multiple musical numbers per episode. I have always loved shows that'll commit to having a musical number each episode. Like, it's such a great added piece of production value that not a lot of shows are willing to do. I just love anything willing to do something special, willing to do something to set itself apart from its competition. I also respect a lot of YouTube channels like this as well. A lot of channels I follow will put like an insane amount of production value into a random one-off episode out of nowhere, and I've always respected that a ton. Which is why I've also put musical numbers in my videos in the past, in the Nausicaa video, I have a Beastars musical video, a couple Assassination Classroom videos I've made have musical numbers in them. Them. Shockingly, the one reaction series I've done for a musical show doesn't have any of my own musical numbers in it, but I feel like that's for the best. I feel like I don't want to be competing with some of the great songs that are featured in Has Been Hotel. And they really are great. I'd say between 60 and 70% of the songs in this show are unmitigated bangers. But you know what they say, every banger bangs differently. That's what they say. It's in the Pledge of Allegiance. You don't remember because you weren't paying attention, but it's there. So we're gonna rank the songs. I got dressed in like my best boy band-esque getup in honor of this music themed episode. Check it out. I even got like the white pants and everything, even though you can't see them during the entirety of this video. It's pretty good. Pretty good dedication, I'd say. So let's get into it. I do have a tier list of all the songs pulled up here. Uh, the tier list doesn't include the two songs from the pilot or Addicted, um, and I haven't reacted to Addicted before. So I'm gonna do that here, uh, and I'm just not going to include any of those on the physical tier list. I'll talk about them, I'll rank them. I don't wanna do any extra work though, so you'll just have to remember where they place. First, we're gonna start with the opening song of the pilot. And I'll be honest with you guys right now, a lot of you aren't gonna like my takes on like the first four songs of this tier list. I can promise you that right now. Chasing rainbows, watching clouds drifting by. Listen, it's a very beautiful song. It's well sang. It's boring as shit. Sorry, my bad. I forgot I was still listing off compliments there. But it is. It's boring as hell. A big factor in how I'm going to be ranking these songs is based on how frequently and how likely I am willing to listen to them ever again. I have no musical background. I know nothing about music. Octave, what's that? It sounds like an eight-handed hand job to me. It sounds like what happens when you get an octopus real excited and then you just start taking off your clothes and you see what'll happen. So anyone expecting me to approach these songs with any sort of like musical expertise or respect Stop expecting that. I know every lyric to Shaggy's Mr. Boombastic. It was genuinely my most played song of 2023. That's a real fact. My genre of choice in high school was pop punk from the early 2000s until I replaced it with Eminem. Now I listen to music by really, really angry women. <laughs> Anybody out there like Royal and the Serpent? That's the level of musical judgment you can expect out of me. The X Factor isn't gonna have me on their show anytime soon to judge musicians. You shouldn't either. All that being said, uh, this one gets a D. Every demon is a rainbow. Inside every sinner is a shiny smile. Inside of every creepy hatchet building maniac is a jolly happy cupcake loving child. The second song in the pilot though, that's a different story. I've said before that like 90% of Has Been Hotel songs are like Dark Souls 3 bosses. They start off decently fun, sometimes pretty lukewarm, and then they get into a second phase and they just go nuts. This is one of those songs. The first half of this song is very whatever, it's very tame, and then this thing switches into like eighth gear so hard, it almost feels like an entirely different song. The only thing holding this song back is like the auto-tune, and I don't even know if it's auto-tune. Again, I know nothing about music, this video was a mistake. But her voice 
is just a little too like chipmunkified for me in this second half. It's like a little grating. Like I can't listen to this on repeat like I do with some of the other songs. In terms of animation though, which is apparently something I'm ranking these on as well, this one does go very hard. I'd say this is probably the best animated sequence of the pilot. Her hair flip still blows me away with just how cool it looks. It's fun. It's really fun, dude. I'd, I'd give this like a B, like a high B, possibly high B. I don't think I'd give it the full A, but I do like it. With some old Dustin Flair, it's no be simple, can some proper class style. Oh, him along the ground, I'm sure your plan is sound. Oh my god, I totally forgot Alistair has a song in this episode. That sentence should probably give you a sense of where I'm gonna put this on the list. Again, this is one I'd probably never listen to again and haven't. This one's a little bit carried by the animation. I like the style. I like what they're going for. I like this like ragtime jazz kind of situation. I like that the genre of music kind of contradicts the visuals. Like, I don't know why they went with this like UV light, like laser tag kind of look for the visual aesthetic, but I do like it. It's a weird juxtaposition. It's a very like kind of nothing song for me though, if I'm being honest. I'm gonna give this, like, a C... I guess C just because it's a little better than the opening one. I, it's really- it's just, like, noise to me a little bit. I told you you guys wouldn't like these opening takes. I promised you, you can't be mad yet. If you start hating my takes beyond this, then you could start getting upset. Up next is Addict, which everybody has been telling me I need to watch, and that it's, like, a companion piece to poison so that is very exciting i'm interested to see what this is this is a brand new start and i think i deserve some praise for the way genuinely thought he was gonna ask for a raise i think i deserve some praise is not where i thought that line was headed um but wow yeah, this sure is a fucking poison companion piece it doesn't even feel like the prequel or sequel to poison it just feels like poison also Despite having overdose and ending up comatose. I have heard that there's a lot of controversy surrounding this song and Poison and Angel and Valentino's characters just in general. And I do get it, but at the same time, I think it's more nuanced than what people are giving it credit for. I've heard people say that Angel Dust and Poison and Val are all like glorifications of abusive relationships and that the show is like trying to like sexify the kind of situation that Angel is in. And I like don't see that at all. I get where people are coming from, I just think that they're wrong. Because I don't think that the show glorifies abusive relationships or like addictive behaviors. I think that it just showcases those elements from the perspective of somebody in them. The problem is people will see depictions of abusive situations where the victim is like making excuses for the abuser and like saying that they love the abuser and love the lifestyle they're in and they will take that to think that the show is advocating for abuse or that the show itself is making excuses for abusers. And I obviously like can't speak for everything and I'm not saying that like every depiction of like an abusive relationship is a good well done depiction of it. But in Has Been Hotel's case, I think what they're doing is showing how somebody could get into an abusive relationship. Like people fall into these because they see positives of them. You know what I mean? For example, being addicted to heroin is not good. Well, I'm, I'm sure we can all agree to that. But doing heroin, I assume, does feel good. And so to the person using heroin and who's 
developed this toxic, addictive relationship with it. Obviously, if you ask them, they're going to say that heroin is rad, even though it's destroying their body, even though it's destroying their relationships. And it's like the same with abusive relationships. People are manipulated by the abuser into being in that relationship. Either they feel like their self-confidence is so low they don't deserve anybody better than the abuser, or the abuser like floods them with really high highs to mitigate the low lows that they give them, much like drugs. The abuser will make the victim feel like an absolute piece of shit 90% of their life so that that 10% when they're praising their victim the victim is like on cloud nine and they get like dopamine from it and they start to chase the thrill of making their abuser happy. So when you look at Angel and their relationship with Val, with drugs, with sex, obviously they're going to speak highly of all of those elements because all of those elements have manipulated them into speaking highly of them. I just think people are sometimes too quick to get angry at like a depiction of an abusive relationship because in order to depict it accurately, you do kind of need to glorify the abuser to some extent to show how the victim could have fallen into their trap. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Nobody would ever fall in love with an abuser if the abuser wasn't good at manipulating people's emotions. If they weren't good at like reeling the victim in with some sense of like charisma, you know? But anyway, that's my huge take on the Angel Dust controversy. I think the fact that Angel keeps going back to Val isn't meant, like, isn't the show being like, oh, you know, whatever, we're just depicting a silly, goofy, abusive relationship. I think it's meant to be seen as a tragic flaw of Angel. And it, it like, you know, addiction isn't easy to just instantly get over. Angel is addicted to the thrill, to the high that Val gives them, which is drugs and money. They're dependent on Val, and dependency is not easily gotten over. And so I think people are mad that Angel didn't get over it, like, episode four of the show. Didn't just, like, tell Val to fuck off, and then was like, well, that's the end of Angel and Val. I think people were mad that Angel went back to Val, but, like, that's just sometimes how it goes. It's a long process to recovery. Oh, oh, what a coincidence. This is a show about rehab. Maybe, maybe we're setting up a long arc of Angel getting over Val and becoming more independent. Hmm, maybe. I'm addicted to the madness. Cool, sick. Glad I just spent like 15 minutes explaining what the show just did in like seven seconds. That's sick. That little bit was super cool real small nitpicky bit real quick i don't like that it like blinks in and out i kind of wish it like th here i'll show you this sequence has black frames in between as two frames of black in between the like these cuts and i wish it didn't i wish it just went like this straight to this but again super nitpicky and i get I think the intention is maybe to make it feel like a blink, where it's like, I close my eyes and I'm like, one way or another, I don't know, it's either I close my eyes and I'm back here in this hell, or I close my eyes. No, I think it is that. I think it's like when they're on stage, if they let their mind wander for even a second, they will end up back in this misery. And so they do all these drugs to not think about this. I think that's what that is. And so the blinking thing does work. I just, aesthetically, it makes me want to have a seizure though. Just concede and give in to your inner demons again. It's like sufficiently catchy, I would say. This is way more of like, like a clubbing song than Poison is. I don't think I like it more than Poison. I think Poison is better than this, in my opinion. So what if I misbehave? It's what everybody craves. Yeah, it's not bad. It's just, I, I think Poison's a little catchier, and I think Poison's visuals 
keep me engaged a little longer. Like as a music video, I think Poison is way better than this as well. Poison also has that moment at the end of it, which we'll get into, where his like voice drops, and that gives me chills and like chokes me up every time, where he like starts sing crying, and that's great. And I did like the blinking sequence in this, but it doesn't come anywhere close to that bit in Poison. Poison also has a part where he just fucking goes go go schlomp on a dude's dick and it's really good this is a solid b i'd listen to this again i definitely would it's nowhere near poison b I, i'll give it a b out of 10. my god i spent way too long on like the non-canon songs on on the show finally first up we got happy day in hell which at first I was ready to give this like a C or a D, like the opening song to the pilot, but I just listened to a bit of it again and it's pretty good. It's pretty fun. It's, it's a very like generic kind of basic musical theater song, but it's like fun. It, it's a good time. I like Charlie's voice actor singing. It's less grating than that one from the pilot, but again, it's very kind of, it's a B. I'll give it a B. It's very, like, uh, it's a very safe opening number for the show. Then we got Hell is Forever, which fucking rips. Hell is Forever is the first time I was, like, blown away by one of the songs. And I think songs later on in the series blow Hell is Forever away. For Here's the reason why. I'm gonna put Hell is Forever at A for Adam. And the thing keeping it from being an S is that it starts with a happy day in hell. It starts with what is essentially a reprise of happy day in hell, which again is kind of that like Dark Souls boss mentality where like the first phase of this song isn't nearly as good as the second phase. However, thankfully the first phase of the song isn't very long and the second phase I've listened to on repeat like so many times. All that being said, none of that discounts the fact that the first half of the song I have skipped so many times. So I think A is a comfortable spot for it. But there's no defy in their face, cause hell is forever whether you like it or not. Yeah, fuck dude, this goes so hard, this is so good. I love... <sighs> I love Alex Brightman. Are you fuckers happy? I do, man. I wish Adam had more songs. I love the way, cause he sings. He sings in the way that I pretend I can sing. Like, I love that he's like, wow, what's the lyric? Hold on. Do you like it or not? Had their chance to behave better. Yeah, where he's like, had their chance to behave better. Now they boil in the pot. I love his like, I love that he growl sings. And that's why I thought every fucking character was voiced by him because every character, everyone's been fucking blowing me up, being like, no one else sounds like Alex Brightman. What are you talking about? They do if he stopped growling. Box sounds just like Alex Brightman if he stopped growling, which is proven by the fact that when Vox sings his song, he fucking growls and he fucking sounds like Alex. Up next is Alex Borle's song, and it actually has the reverse issue, kind of. It has a weirdly unique issue for me. Whereas most songs in season one start off kind of lukewarm and then get really good, this one starts off really good and then gets kind of worse and then ends really good. I love the opening to this song. I even love, like, the introduction to this song, like the talky bit, where the piano comes in, it's like, bum, dun, I'm not gonna do that anymore. The sec, I got one bum in, and I was like, this is stupid already. Like, this part. That fucker is back! Yeah, I thought he was gone for good too. It's been seven years! You're telling me that doesn't sound like Alex Brightman. But like, this part, I love every time it like plays on Spotify, like this part's included and I love it. I love his like, it's been seven years. Like he's got a good growl about him. Then he's like, it's time to show that fucker who's really in charge now. And he's got a great laugh. Like it's so sinister. And then it goes into, 
I'm gonna make you wish that you stayed gone. Say hello. I sing this part so goddamn frequently. I love this part so much, I invent lyrics that don't exist to extend it in my mind. It's so, it's got such a great flow to it. It's so like sinister sounding, but then. So the radio demon is back in town. Why is he hanging around? What does that mean for your family? All this shit happens. I don't know, I'm sure again, this is included in people not liking whatever takes I'm about to say. I'm sure people are really into this part, but it's nowhere near as good as the opening. Even like the rhyme scheme gets kind of worse for me, where it's like it, the, it, words are rhyming like every third word, and it just feels like 90s hip hop to me, where it's like, yeah, I'm feeling good here in the hood, just like I know I should. And it's like, dog, fucking like lay off the rhymes. We Music has evolved since then, you know, give it like do a rhyme at the end of each sentence. Again, another nitpick, I know. I've never rated or reviewed songs before. But then it's so weird because the song fucking wrangles me back in. Rock's as strong as he purports, or is it based on his support? Even this, like I'm already getting dragged back in at like this moment. It's still not as good as what's to come, but this is a little better. Let's be yeah, this is another thing that I'm just constantly saying to myself in the shower. Just like, the fuck, like when everyone was imitating Bane in The Dark Knight Rises, I'm just like, Let's begin. I'm gonna make you wish that I'd stayed gone. Anyway, um, another A, I'd say, because I do really like it. A, low A, high B. This one's behind Hell is Forever. Not as good as Hell is Forever because the parts I like are way too short. I'm gonna be honest, I don't even remember how it starts with a smile goes. I have no, I know what this image is and I've seen it in the Spotify playlist. I just skip it on principle. I don't know what this song is. You know what, not gonna lie, better than I remember or better than I didn't remember. I, this like, I expected this to be a D because I really didn't remember liking it at all. It's not bad. It's really not bad. I like, we get more Alex Brightman and if you listen close, you can really hear him, which is good. I like it, here's the thing though, I like it in the way that I like a whole new world from Aladdin. You know what I mean? Good song, I'll sing it sometimes. Am I gonna like hop in the car right now, blast a whole new world? No. It's one of the better Charlie songs, but also I'm lying. <laughs> I don't think it is. It's maybe the worst Charlie song, if I don't include the ones from the pilot. I'll put this, I don't know. It's like adjacent to Happy Day in Hell. These both might be C's to be honest. I'm gonna put these down here real quick because I think C is gonna get neglected. Both of these are like adjacently good though. I wouldn't say one's better than the other necessarily. They may get promoted back to B though, we'll see. You've got it twisted. I'm not the one who needs a new attitude. I don't know why, but I do hate this song. It's got, it's got elements that I should like. It's got my girl, Hornet from Hollow Knight. It's pretty, decently catchy. I like hate this Bratz doll character though. I hate this actual literal monster high character. It's got the line, I'm a hashtag bitch, which is just bad and way too late. I don't know, uh, but uh, again, hold on. Give me a sec. Give me a goddamn second. Story group attending. Since when our overlord too scared to fight your long past trending. I, th I like it more than I initially did. This is like an instant skip for me when I'm listening to this album. I'm liking it more than I remember liking it originally. It's too like, it's too with the emojis and the hashtag. I hate her and that's tainting my perception of this song. I'm gonna give this a C. It's maybe my least favorite song, but that's not entirely true because I know one I don't like even more. For right now, this will be bottom C 
possibly D. We'll see as we progress. And who's to say who'd survive the fray this song is also an instant skip whenever I listen to the album, but it but it's for everybody else's safety. I almost exclusively listen to music while I'm driving in the car, and if she fucking busts into this note while I'm on the highway, no one is safe. This goes so hard, the transition in the second phase of this boss fight just makes me want to floor it and drive all over every goddamn lane of traffic. If I listen to this song in a grocery store, I'll strangle someone. I'll just, I just will. I'll just do it. If I'm just like getting my rice a -roni and she hits the like, but who's to say? I'll fucking throw that shit down and I will throttle a bitch. It's just so hype. This song also made me start to like Vaggy. It didn't last, <laughs> but like this song was when I was like, oh fuck, at least Vaggy can sing. I, I've said before, I think Vaggy and Charlie are like the weakest characters in the show. And not that I don't like them, but they are like, if I'm tier listing the characters, they're at the bottom. But Vaggy's part is so good. The lyrics in this are really strong. Not all lyrics are created equal in this show, as displayed by the previous song. But these ones are great. This song works as its own song, separate from the show. Like, I feel like I could play someone this song. And if they don't listen too hard to the lyrics, they'll be like, oh, this what fucking, uh, 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 what's her name? Oh my God, I can't, oh, I'm blanking on everything now. Why do I want to say Christina? Giselle? Oh my God, the princess switch. What is her name? Dude, I'm not even close. I'm not even close. I, I want to say Jessica. It's not Vanessa Hudgens. I feel like I could play this for someone and they'd be like, oh, Vanessa Hudgens just come out with a new banger because uh vaggy kind of sounds like her this one rules this is our first s tier and like i love this song this was my favorite song of the whole show maybe end of sentence s tier first s tier baby judging the s's is gonna be really hard because the next like this like this is when the show kicks into overdrive in terms of the songs here's what's good about that one too is that it does start off slow it starts where i'm like oh uh, you know this is gonna be a whatever song, but because the switch goes so hard, it makes me appreciate the slow opening. The change from like high school musical, like love ballad to Evanescence fucking like rock ballad goes so hard. And the rock ballad bit only works because it comes in as such a surprise. Yeah, big S tier energy. Up next is Poison. Wonder where that's gonna go. God, I like don't even want to listen to Poison right now. I got, I got that last song so stuck in my head. But who's to say? Like S, right? Like definitely S. Both in terms of visuals. I, I mean, talked about the visuals of the last few songs, but fuck them. The visuals are way better than Addict, which is fair because I'm sure like they had the budget for it now. This one, I'd say more so than the last song. And I shouldn't have even said this about the last song because the compliment works way better here. This is a song that 100% stands on its own aside from being a part of the show. Like you can't play somebody happy day in hell and not expect questions. You can play somebody this and they'll just be like, oh shit, this is a fire Kesha song. I've listened to the, I've watched this dude like sing this song live on YouTube so many times. And like the best part of the song that I will replay constantly isn't the one you're thinking of, or maybe it is. My favorite part of the music video is this part coming up. Like, that's just so brutal. I talked about it in my reaction of the episode. It's so brutal. It's so well done. And it's sh like the music and the visuals and the lyrics all just come crashing together in perfect harmony. But the best part of the song is this part. Poison, 
Similar to what I said about the last song, this switch up hits so hard because of what comes before it. I love him switching in like the cry singing. It's so well done. It's so brutal and sad. This is also one of the very rare songs of this season that isn't in the boss battle format. I genuinely think like every bit of this song works really well. There isn't like a first half that I have to kind of like scrub past or that I'm just like waiting for a certain part of this song. I do think this last bit is the best part of the song, but I've never like skipped the first two minutes to get to it. Yeah, this is great. This may be the best song in the season. We'll see. S tier, maybe above this one. <sighs> maybe above the last one. For one, I, I know its name. I don't know the name of the last one. <laughs> For two, I've listened to it more times. I'm more likely to replay it. And there isn't a slow moment in it. Y'all ready for my redemption arc here? I did not give Loser Baby the due justice that it deserved when I reacted to it. Loser Baby, at first, I thought was like a filler song. I thought it was like a C tier song when I first started listening to it, like in its first half. I was like, oh, you know, it's cute that we get a song from Keith David. I didn't know he could sing, but it's kind of slow. It's kind of like waltzy. And then without me even noticing a switch in my mentality, Loser Baby somehow became my most listened to song of this album. It's just so good, isn't it? It's so weirdly, deceptively good because the visuals are very fine and like the lyrics are also very fine, but it's so fucking catchy. And Keith David's voice is so good and it duets really well with Angel's voice. I think I said it in my last Has Been Hotel video, but like the two parts that just massage my brain really well are the first chorus when he just first slides into that like, you're a loser, baby, a loser, goddamn baby. I'm singing way too much for this video, like, for a man who can't sing. But that part's great. And then I love another part that I'm constantly singing to myself is when Angel's like, I'm a loser, honey, a schmoozer, and a dummy. Hold on, I can do that better. Let me listen to it again. I'm a loser, honey, a schmoozer, and a dummy. Never mind, I can't do it better. I'm like, what was I even thinking trying to compete with this? It's also just so sweet. It's like adorable. It's an adorable song. And it really like drew me to Husk and this relationship. And then it does have a third phase where it's like, I got an appetite for gambling. I got an appetite for- This part, this part's great too. It's, yeah, this is an S. This is for sure an S. Is it better than Poison? I don't know. I have listened to this one more, so probably that seems weird <laughs> to say. I don't know. Ah, oh, man, I hate ranking things for a man who ranks so many damn things. It's Loser Baby, in front of Poison. And then this is like too far from front though, is my beef. Up next, we've got, we got some interesting ones. I think things are about to get very, very complicated and interesting in ranking these from here on out. All those are like easy S's, and even though I feel weird about the placement of the S's, it didn't take me too long to decide on that. These next few, as I'm looking at them, have me confused. All right then. <laughs> Looks like you could use some help from the big boss of hell himself. I like just don't know where to put this. It's really good. It like belongs in A, at least. But where in A? You know what, never mind. I just figured it out. This was way easier than I thought. Actually, you know what? No, it isn't, because I remember what the rest of the song is. This is an interesting song because there's controversy behind it, which is weird to me. This song, I would argue, and feel free to argue in the comments, is at its best when Jeremy Jordan is singing, and then it gets worse when Alistair is singing, and then I don't care that Mimsy stops it. There's like weird controversy about Mimsy 
breaking, like, cutting the song off short, I heard... Who cares? I heard the fandom doesn't like Mimsy for that reason. I think she's fun. She's a silly little gal. And I think Alistair was ruining the song. Alistair just doesn't have a great voice to me unless he's doing his like menacing, unless he's in like a menacing tone. Unless he's doing his like, let's begin. Then I don't care. And Jeremy Jordan's firing on all cylinders with this one. And then Alistair, you know what? Alistair is my Mimsy, cause he cuts this guy off. I, man, I was gonna say there was no, there were no bad segments to this song, but I was wrong, cause I don't like Alistair's. Let me hear it again. I'm your guy, your day to day, your chum, your steadfast hotelier. He's not as bad as I made it out to seem. I don't dislike it, but I do get bitter that he robs the rest of the song from Jeremy Jordan. It's not bad. It stays in A. It, Huh. All right. I think it's at the top of A because I like, I like Alistair's segment. It's more of a complete song than Hell is Forever. Like Hell is Forever, the beginning of that instant skip every time. I won't always skip Alistair's segment of this song, but I will be like, I will go back to Jeremy Jordan's before finishing the song. I think this is where it belongs. I do think it's an A, it's very well done. And Alistair's part's not as bad as I was giving it discredit for. You know what? As, man, this is tough because I'm looking at the rest. I think, I think Alistair and Vox's song needs to go into B because there's nothing in B. And I think they, they're not all A. Like, I don't think that one's an A because I only like probably 20% of that song. And the big middle chunk, I don't love. Ugh, man, that sucks though, because I really like that beginning and end. But as we go into this next song, I'm like, something's up. Like, the quality is, like, everyone who's in A doesn't belong in A, is what I'm realizing. You don't know that! I do! This is, like, without a doubt, the most passionate sounding song in the whole show. Like, Jeremy's killing it. We didn't even get to the song yet, and I'm already like choked up. Like when he's when he does his like, you don't know that. Mwah. Hey, this is a trick. This one's so tricky though, because I don't really listen to it that much. It's like a good musical theater song. It reminds me of something in like next to normal, you know? But I really don't listen to it that much. There's one moment I really like, and I wish there was more of it. I've been dying to find out who you I've been waving, wanting the same thing. This is where the song really kicks in for me. And as I just skipped past all the rest, I realize how much I don't really care for this song that much. It's not that I don't like the song. It's that I don't ever want to listen to it that much. It's just not catchy. I, th this just isn't my type of music. It's very well sung. So, I'm gonna put it at the bottom of A. It's so well sung that, like, I will enjoy it and listen to it, and I do love this moment of, like, I've been waiting, wanting the same thing. Like, I like when it gets a little bouncy, but it's no loser, baby. It's certainly no Hell is Forever. I'm starting to think I put Hell is Forever too low now, also. Because I really dig Hell is Forever. We'll see. We'll come back. Cause we got no worries, got no burglaries, no strife It's the perfect afterlife You know what's weird? I heard people don't like Welcome to Heaven This, like, and it's fine Just someone told me, they were like, I'm so shocked Danny likes Welcome to Heaven, everybody hates it I'm so out of touch with what the people like I will say, this is the definition of a song that I, like, will never listen to or remember in, like, a month. I have, like, nothing to say about it. It's poppy. Like I said, it's like a Chip Skylark song. This, like, definitely belongs in C. And I... Man, now C's looking weird. Does Happy Day in Hell belong in C if the Vox song is in B? I don't know, but I like the Vox song more. We're... I'm gonna keep pressing on. It's not fair, Sarah. Careful, Charlie. Keep a cool head. No! Yeah, this is like the final boss of the goddamn series. I can't believe this isn't the last song in the show. They went so hard with this one. This is like a six-phase boss, and most of the phases go really hard. 
I'd say this first phase is the weakest, but as I'm listening to it right now, the build-up's really good. I love the like, it's not fair, Sarah. Like, that's good. This does have a moment that I will skip to frequently. I think all of you can tell what it is. He blew his shot like a cock's in his mouth. This discussion is senseless and petty. We need more fucking songs from whoever this is. This girl's so good. I love, this is also like the closest I ever get to a musical fight scene in this show because at least it's like big conflict. Also, that's not true. I just remembered there's another musical fight scene in this show. We'll get to that one. But this is like such good conflict. I like that we're getting every faction singing and they're all singing motifs of their songs. Like I like that this bleeds into Hell is Forever and I like how Charlie and uh, the angel girl both sing their like version of Hell is Forever. It's like a really good amalgamation of a lot of the songs previously sung. But I will say I do skip the Sarah part. I don't know. This part's the strongest. We like uh, the whole fucking thing should be sung by this girl. It definitely belongs in S. I think maybe below Poison, just out of like sheer, I listen to Poison more. And it feels, I like that poison. I do like when the songs have multiple parts and key changes, but it's usually because it assures me that the song's not going to be bad the whole time. You know what I mean? Most of the time in this show, when I'm like hyped about a key change, it's because I wasn't liking the song that much and I'm hyped that it gets a second chance for me to enjoy it. And so even though this song has only good key changes, they're not, I don't know if I even wanna say that. Like I appreciate that Poison and Loser Baby don't really have big key switches, but it's because the entirety of the song is good. You know, like if the whole song, if this whole song was just that like in the key of that like, come on Sarah bit, this would be like a B at most. So yeah, under poison I think, above that one whose name I don't know, but love. This next one, I'm not incredibly excited to talk about. I have gotten so many comments of people being like, man, Danny's gonna fucking love Out For Love. And I received those after recording my reaction to Out For Love. And I do like it, but that video where I react to this song isn't out yet. I don't know what the reception to my response to Out For Love is, so I'm nervous. I, I like, it was, it's not my favorite one. It's silly. It's like really, it's really cringy to me. I do love that Hornet sings it. Like, I love her voice. Her voice is great, but it's like, I don't feel as bad being like, oh, this isn't my favorite one because she has, they have another duet that's really, really good and just way better than Out For Love. Let me listen to some of this. By your detestation, your every step is stoked with animus. It's good. I definitely like it. It reminds me of Hit Me Baby one more time, if I'm being honest. I love this singer. I love this voice actor. The character is hot as hell. The lyrics are just really funny to me. They're really cringy, and I'm sure that's part of the appeal, but it's so, like, it's too edgy, but not in, like, a good way for me. This is, like, a B. This is so, I, I'd call this a B. I've never listened to it after watching the show. It's just, like, a very fine song for me. It is the closest thing I get, genuinely this time, to an action scene musical number, but like not really. It's not really like the essence of a fight scene musical number because the conflict is less desperate than in the previous song. I love the confrontation in Les Mis because it is two characters with opposing ideologies fighting via song. And that is what the court scene and the last song is. Whereas this, it's like a training montage, which is cool, and there's kicks and punches happening, but it, it's like lyrically a worse choreographed fight scene than the previous song. Does that make sense? It's like if we're equating it to actual fight scenes, it's like the difference between like a Marvel movie fight and a John Wick fight. Like a Marvel movie, 
and we'll say, because they're not all created equal, but, like, we'll say, like, you know, a fight from, like, one of the Tom Holland Spider-Men, or, like, an Ant-Man one. Out for Love is, like, an Ant-Man fight sequence, where, like, technically, yeah, they're fighting, but I'm not gonna, like, remember the choreography and, like, the fight doesn't make me feel anything, but a John Wick Four fight scene is like more emotional it's choreographed beautifully it's desperate it like knows what makes a great fight scene it's not just that there is fighting it's that it like invokes tension and hype within me all that is to say be underneath the box that feels so fitting that feels so right when adam brings the battle here i must appear like i'm I like this song. I like this song a lot. It's just fun, you know? It doesn't blow me away. It's just good. It's like not too tough of a competition. I like this more than Out For Love, but underneath the Vox one. This is the best. God, what am I doing? Did I put this at A? I don't think this belongs at A anymore, actually. This is under the Vox, I, I, I don't know. This is, okay, here we go. The song between Charlie and her dad is a better song than everything in B, I would say but I don't like it more than everything in B. I'm gonna put it behind the song we just listened to. And maybe the Vox one goes back. The Vox one goes back because I think the song we just listened to deserves to be at the top of B. It it's a good, it's a good fun song, but it's new, it's very recent to me because I just recently watched uh, the finale of Hasman Hotel. So maybe that's like part of it. Like I haven't gotten the chance to listen to it much. May I guess this is just where it belongs. I hate doing this. I don't like this anymore. I'm afraid people are gonna get mad at me. I'm afraid that I'm gonna get mad at myself and be like, what the hell? You, you put fucking poison below loser, baby. You know, I'm gonna wake up in a cold sweat being like, the Vox song is at the bottom of A? Are you crazy? I'm pressing on. Maybe some new clarity will come to me. By the way, the next two songs I think are bad. So many lives you've changed. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just bored, you know? It's not bad. Again, I don't know anything about music. I'm like, me, this, as far as I know, this could be like the most well-constructed song on earth. It, I just like don't care. Yeah, it's just more than anything again, but without Jeremy Jordan, which is a big mistake, and without, uh, without the cool key change. So, D. This is like my least favorite one so far. I don't remember what the last song is, which should also tell you a lot. This one's going into D, which again is making me really reconsider where more than anything is, because it's really just that key change and the fact that I respect how well they're singing, but I don't like listening to it in the car. I, I kind of like listening to Jeremy Jordan's bit though, honestly. He's so good. More of him. What even is the last song of the show? I was too mad about Sir Pentius. Yeah, this is like in the same way that the opening song. What was that one even called? I don't even remember it. Oh, Happy, Happier in Hell, Happy Day in Hell. In the same way that that is kind of a safe opening song for the series, this is a very safe closing song. Like, it's a very generic, like, end of a musical kind of song. It's so fine. I will never listen to this again. Happy Day in Hell. That's where that is, huh? Yeah, that that's all about, right? I guess down here. It's not worse than more than anything without Jeremy Jordan, though. I feel pretty okay about this list, to be honest. Considering this ranking is entirely based on, like, if I like the songs, how who's gonna argue? I don't think... No, you know what? This is wrong. Hell is Forever belongs at the top of A. And then that's probably correct. And then we got Loser Baby, Poison. Yes, yeah, yeah. I can't, mm, man, it's tough. I think this is my list though. All of the songs I'd say are at least pretty good. The ones at C and D are just forgettable at worst. I think I gotta re-listen to It Starts With Sorry because I feel like that one's gonna start growing on me. I could see that rising to mid B levels. I could see that beating 
that out for love because i think it does i think i want like out for love to be like here and then these kind of become b contenders happy day in hell i think this goes above here yeah i think this is right because it starts with sorry really grew on me out of nowhere but anyway that is my list until it isn't uh in like five minutes when i decide i'm wrong again let me know uh what your give me your top five no give me your top three and bottom three songs in the comments below let me know what else you'd like to see me watch react to just make a video on it's kind of atypical in my usual videos um but it was fun i liked it and i will see you guys next time